Let's see what's going on in the world of Apple. Apple TV Plus, blah, blah, blah. iOS 13.2, yeah, we already talked about that. But HomePod update, awesome. Oh, wait, it's doing wh what? Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to update that. That would be stupid. Oh, wait. So Apple pulled the update. Okay. And. Okay. So. Okay. Well, let's see if this one works. Greetings, Internet. It's Dustin again with my home kit home, bringing you all things Apple home kit from product reviews to how to's to news like this one. So if that's something that you're into, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our new content as soon as it's released. Well, it had a bit of a rocky start there at the beginning, but now we have a HomePod update for iOS 13.2, you know, for the longest time after the initial round of software updates for this year, you know, HomePod was kind of left in the dark. We are sitting on 12.4 for the longest time. And then with the release of 13.2, we got a HomePod update, finally. So we do see some really big features coming to the HomePod in this one. So what we'll do in this video, we'll go ahead and run through some of the more major updates. Then at the end, I'll give you my final thoughts on this update. Well, I'm pretty excited to talk about these updates, so let's get into it. First out of the gate is multi-user support. So now what we can do is using iCloud, we can actually have up to six people's different voice prints used with the HomePod. This gives them access to personal requests, you know, things like phone calls and text messages, calendars, reminders for each of those individuals. It's a really useful feature. It is a little bit complicated to set up, I will admit that. And there are a couple of steps that you'll need to go through. However, it's pretty useful and I'm glad that it's finally here. So ever since AirPlay 2 rolled out, we've had the ability to actually send audio from our phone to the HomePod using Siri. In iOS 13.2.1, we now have Handoff, which gives us the ability to actually physically move our phone close to the HomePod, and whatever audio is playing on our phone will automatically transfer to the HomePod. This also works in reverse, so if we have anything playing on our HomePod and we want it to maybe jump over to our phone, we just simply move the phone close to the HomePod and it magically jumps to our phone. Pretty unique little feature. On Apple Music, there is a seemingly endless number of ambient sounds that we can have Siri play for us. However, in iOS 13.2.1, Apple thought it a good idea to actually give us some of their own ambient sounds. And here's how some of those sound. Here's stream from ambient sounds. Here's Fireplace from Ambient Sounds. Now playing Night from Ambient Sounds. Now playing White Noise from Ambient Sounds. While setting timers and even multiple timers is nothing new for the HomePod, this go-round we actually have the added ability to set a countdown timer. 
This means that we can set a timer for our ambient sound to turn off just like this. Hey Siri, turn this off in 30 minutes. Okay, I'll stop playing in 30 minutes. So if you are watching this video, you're probably already aware of the fact that the HomePod does not have any physical buttons. This can make resetting it a little bit tricky. So we've had the ability to hard reset it in the past, but if we wanted to soft reset it, well, we simply had to unplug it, wait a few moments, and then plug it back in. In iOS 13.2.1, we now have the ability to soft reset the HomePod from the Home app. Of course, we can remove it here and also perform a hard reset if we so desire. I like having this little feature. And finally, we have my favorite feature to come to the HomePod in iOS 13.2.1, and that is the HomePod as a HomeKit accessory. Finally. So I always found it kind of weird that we needed the home app to configure and set up the HomePod since its inception, but we could never really use it as a HomePod accessory, and now we can. So we have the ability now to include our HomePods and anything that's on Apple Music or in our music libraries in scenes and automations. And not only scenes and automations, but we can also assign Apple Music and any sounds, anything in our library, to other HomeKit accessories like buttons or switches. So this really opens up a huge number of possibilities with HomeKit and I'm really excited to start working on some different content for you guys to give you ideas of how you can actually incorporate this into your HomeKit setups. So stay tuned for that. So let's start out by talking about the big major updates to the HomePod. And the first one is the multi-user experience. Now, this is a fantastic update if you are someone who lives in a home with more than one person. Right? So before we had personal requests, we could make phone calls, we could send messages, get calendar information, all of that jazz. But anybody could do that if we had personal requests turn on. Now, Siri has the ability to recognize different voices and then pull information based on the recognition of that person by their voice. So this is a pretty no-brainer feature for me. This should have come with the release of the HomePod itself, but you know, we have it now, so there's no complaints there. One thing that I think could make Apple stand apart from the competition is, sure, it's a multi-user device now, so multiple people can use it, what happens if those multi-users happen to speak a different language? Can Siri actually change over to those languages based on that person's profile? And I think it can. I don't know why it doesn't, but it seems easy enough to make that switch if there's just one trigger command. Now, I do understand that this is a very niche feature that I'm requesting here, but for those who live in a multi-user home, but also a multilingual home, such as myself, where my first language is English and my wife's first language is Spanish, this can be really useful and I think would actually help us to use the HomePod more. Well, and by us, I mean her. The other really big feature to come to HomePod this go around was support for scenes and automations. That's right, we can finally, finally, finally add Apple Music to our scenes and accessories. Now, we're not just limited to, you know, arriving home and having Birth of the Cool playing as our tea kettle heats up and the lights come on. No, we're, we're not talking about that here. We're talking about some of the extended features that we can really start to take advantage of music, sounds, and all of these sorts of things. And we will be looking at that in the coming weeks and how we can actually integrate HomePod more into our HomeKit setups. 
you know, we did see some kind of minor under the hood improvements that you're not going to notice on a regular basis, such as, you know, HomeKit Secure Video now using the HomePod to kind of process some of this video data. You know, not really available yet, but as soon as the hardware manufacturers start to roll out integration for HomeKit Secure Video, that's something that your HomePod can now do. We also got the feature for soft resetting the HomePod, which I think is pretty great. You know, you could have always hard reset the HomePod. Nobody really wants to do that, however. You know, we could always unplug it, but you know, if you're like me and you're kind of worried about keeping cables out of the way, I know it doesn't seem like it in the studio here, but you know, I do like to keep cables you know, to a minimum and, you know, so hiding them and then having to crawl back behind a couch or a cabinet or something to try to unplug the HomePod, well, that's just, you know, it's a nuisance. So I really like having this soft reset feature. And, you know, ambient sounds are ambient sounds. It's not something I'm going to use every day, but it's nice to know it's there. And finally, with handoff, you know, this is something I don't really see myself using that often. Um, you know, if I'm listening to something, say, on my phone and I want it to go over to the HomePod, well, I'm just going to ask Siri to go ahead and do that for me. I don't need to walk over to the HomePod and you know, hold my phone an inch away from the HomePod and then it transfers. I, that's just a big mess to me. So it was a pretty big update for the HomePod in general, but I want to know what your thoughts are. What was your favorite feature? What would you have liked to have seen? Let us know in the comments down below. Also below the video in the description box, you'll find links to all of the things that we talked about in today's video as well as a link to the blog over at myhomekithome.com and our social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at myhomekithome where we regularly post other HomeKit related content. As always, if you found the video useful, you can let us know by giving us a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in more HomeKit related content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, as well as the bell notification so you don't miss out on any of our new content as soon as it's released. Well, in this update cycle, we've got a lot to talk about, and I'm really looking forward to all of the videos that I'll be sharing with you guys, so stay tuned for those. But for now, that about wraps up this one. I do thank you for watching, and until I see you in the next one, this has been Dustin with my Kit Home.